You would think I went to school for yeah, chiropractic. Winding it up. They just sent my why you come from all right can y'all hear me okay it's the venus lounge we're about to blitz off let me know if the music is too loud all right jess take that banner down i'm ready how you doing it's the venus lounge the number one podcast in the galaxy and when i say number one i mean number one we're here to talk about women this podcast is dedicated to women and mothers who balance their lives and their families. See, y'all messed me up throwing, turning the music down because I was ready to get like hood real quick with it, but it's okay. It's the podcast that's dedicated <laughs> to women, working women and mothers who are trying to find their balance with their lives, their careers, their families, and then also trying to stay central in your creativity and your healing and your purpose and your community, just doing all of these things together. So that's what I like to do for y'all. So make sure you join us here every Thursday at seven o'clock on Facebook Live and also on all KPFA platforms. Listener supported radio for over 75 years. You can catch the Venus Lounge. And um, yeah, because I feel a little hood today. I don't know why it just hit me. I don't know what happened to the music. I don't know why I can't turn it up. Can you hear me? Okay, music sounds good. I'll talk through with me for a minute. Like and share. You know what I'm saying? It's, fr it's Thursday, Friday Eve. I can't drink on the show, but I'm going to sure drink some water. All right. So. I have a special, you know what, I ain't even a guest anymore at this point. This is just straight up my homegirl. She's my friend. She's a mother. I admire her. We always hang out at the studio after hours. And I'd like to welcome to the show STEM ambassador, mother, and overall homie friend, Kat Bobino. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. What's up, Kat? Man, everything and nothing. <laughs> everything and nothing. Oh, why do you say that? Well, you know, in life, you know, everything is always happening. Being a mom, working, doing your personal projects, yes. there's always something happening and then you go home and nothing's happening. Right. It's like know? hurry up and wait. Exactly. God. Exactly. So how was your week? Whoo, that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, you know, it's been, it's had its good days and its bad days, you know. I've had some frustrations, but some wins. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about the wins because we always want to talk about positive stuff first. Okay, okay. So, so what were the wins? Some wins, some wins. I had a good conversation with uh, someone at the Lawrence Berkeley Labs. We talked about internships, getting more of our students from Oakland, doing yes, more yes. things in science. Um, had a good conversation with my alma mater, Stillman College in Alabama. Mm -hmm. um, I have a good friend slash mentor who's an astronaut. And I told him, hey, if I can get her to mentor some of your kids, mm -hmm. will you promise me at least two full academic scholarships for students out here? Which they said yes. Okay. So that's a win. Um, and then I've been talking to um, Liberation Park to host a science festival. Mm -hmm. So that's a win. Do you think we're ready for science? <sighs> <laughs> and I only say that because, you know, it yeah. seems like if it ain't on the shade room or if it's not, you know, we just won't show up. And you came by my studio earlier this week. Actually, it was yesterday and just really frustrated by an event that you put together. You 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 made these kits. You got sponsors and no one showed up. Can you share that and why you think we're not ready for STEM? Or science. Well, okay. So I partnered with the Center of Science and Industry from Ohio. They contacted me saying, hey, we want to give away some science kits for free, right? I said, okay, but let's make it bigger. So I did a passport, which was if the families took their kids to USS Hornet and Chabot Space and Science for free, mm -hmm. which you usually have to pay, mm -hmm. as well as African American Museum and Library and Rosie the Riveter, they would be able to have brunch with astronaut Dr. Yvonne Cagle at the Infinite in Richmond, which is a VR experience, and they would have been able to do the experience for free. For free. We gave away 750 kits. What was in the kits? 
So these are very easy science projects that the kids can do at home with mm -hmm, their families. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, one was about rockets, which if you just take an old film canister, um, oh my goodness, water, and uh, I forget what it's called, but it's just like an antacid. Put it in there, turn it upside down, it will pop up. Right, okay. And we gave away 750. Mind you, we I did not know until the day before, the White House showed up. The second gentleman, Douglas Imhoff, a husband of Kamala Harris, was there. <laughs> That's what they call the second gentleman. They call gentleman. him the second gentleman. That's hilarious. As well as the director of NASA Ames was there with Cosign I, right? It was on the news. I'm sorry, I can't you know, get over that. Right? <laughs> and, and, and it was on the news. And, and then Cosign let me know like a week before the brunch, not one family did it. Not one wow, family went there's... four locations for free. To have wow, brunch please. and a VR experience. Not so. Why do you think that is? Whew, there, there's so many uh, things to it. Yeah, I mean, California is expensive, right? We're targeting Title One schools. We're targeting people who may not have the financial or cars or transportation to get to places. That's understandable. However, but it's free, and it's you got free. kids. Like, what? You, if if I have children and there's nothing to do, and I'm stuck at home on a whatever day afternoon, I'm taking to my my children to something a free event. A free, yes. You can't go to Chabot or USS Hornet for free. Yes, yes. I yes, made yes. it sure that you can go for free. All you had to do is show the passport. Aww. And not one family did it. And it broke Damn. me. It broke me. All the work I, I did know. to do it. I'm so sorry it about that. Me. Yeah, I, I could tell when you came. Well, we need to figure out how we can get the word out and support and get our children more involved in STEM and in science. There's just so many things there. What, what do you think are some of the misconceptions around STEM? Well, honestly, I'm going to share you that I'm going to share the misconception about sports and entertainment. Okay. Right. Everyone wants their kids to go into sports or entertainment because they think it's fast money. They think, oh, you'll be a celebrity. And it's glamorous. It's glamorous. Mm -hmm. It's glamorous. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. But, you know, you look at the Warriors. Average person can name maybe five players, mm -hmm. no more than 10. It's true. It's true. But how many true. actually play for the Warriors? That's one team of how many in the whole nation. Right. So if you're not on that level of being the name brand person, you're a bench warmer. And you last maybe two to three years. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have education behind you, then what? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Right? And if they're not looking at you in junior high or even high school now, odds are you're not going to be seen in college. So when you look at the statistics of who goes into sports and who goes into entertainment, who actually makes it, you got to have something to fall back on. So I never want to tell a student or a child you can't do it. I'm just saying, have something to fall back on. Have some, but you know, I'm the wrong person to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm in film and in entertainment. My husband's a musician and music producer. My son is a boxer, and my daughters also. Well, they work in social justice, and my daughter, other daughters, a veterinarian. But I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I get it though. But we try and support. Well, no, and that's so, the thing is like there I needs never... to be there's some kind of bridge that needs to happen. And we're talking with Kat Bobino. She is a STEM ambassador and she gave an event last week where she gave uh, got sponsorship and gave out 700 kits for children to come and learn science. And no one showed up. And we're discussing why our children, our community won't show up or support anything outside of sports and entertainment. Well, and here's the thing. The kids loved it. Kids love it. Is it the parents? It's the parents. Oh, it's the parents. Damn parents. <laughs> I mean, if I had said you can have brunch with Marshawn Lynch, Girl, odds been a are line they, around they, the corner. it would have been a line. But I'm saying you can have brunch with a black female astronaut. Speaking of, but let me, I'm a pivot for real, one second. I also believe that the media and the journalists and the people who report about this won't show up unless entertainers are involved either that don't it doesn't get the proper marketing and promotion i, I think and so we did this event on march 3rd right cosi ran it cosi sent out a press release mm -hmm. and invited city council members to come mm -hmm. you know how many showed up none so no 
you didn't have any city council members that showed up. None. Not to support. Not to support. We did it at two places. Y'all whack. <laughs> we did it at two places. Give me the names of these city council <laughs> members because I'm about to All send some emails. All of Oakland emails. city council Ooh, members. y'all whack. Yes. So when it comes time to vote, guess what? <laughs> Anyway, okay, but, so but you know what? And here's the thing okay. we did it big at Manzanita, gave away, I think, almost 500 kids or 400 kids there. And then we did it at EOYDC. The news didn't go to Manzanita, but they went to EOYDC, not because we invited them, because we invited them to both. Mm -hmm. They only showed up because NASA and the White House showed up at EOYDC. And if you look at the news reports on it, right. it's all about the, the second gentleman showed up. The second gentleman showed up. Oh my God, Not cares? that an Oakland native right. put it together and bought the White House, NASA, and COSI. Yeah. It's the media, though. I um, definitely believe that the media has a, a tremendous amount of power and voice and influence over where our eyes and ears are going to be directed. And and I'm just going to pivot that conversation to basically what has been on all the news blogs across the nation this past week. And that is the situation with the LSU basketball player. Um, is it Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark? Um, the situation where after the game, she did like uh, Angel Reese did like this with her hand and the other player, uh, Caitlin Clark, also did it like this is just what happens when you are in a competitive sport. Uh -huh. Men do it all the time. And then all of a sudden, Angel Reese got, you know, labeled as ghetto and just, uh -huh. you know, antagonizing her. And I also felt bad for Caitlin because she didn't say that. And she understood what the what competitive, was what was up. Yeah. yeah. And so the journalist put a narrative out there and now this entire conversation has started and they use race, they use women. And now it's just this whole conversation around it. What are your thoughts? <clears throat> well, first of all, social media is good and bad. But this is a, the good part of social media, mm -hmm. because with before social media, we would have only seen what the journalist said. With good social point. media, we can compare and contrast point, what we're hearing point, and what point. we're seeing. Good right. Point, good point. So you have the journalists who are usually, you know, white. <laughs> it was a white journalist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm just going to just say. Yeah, those... but they threw also threw the other white player under the bus. Anyway, they did. They that's did. Like. like both white and black were victims in this. I'm mm -hmm. just going to say, and women as well, because yeah. men do it all the time, like I yeah. said. So go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I was just going to say the Mayo sapiens decided that this is good. This is bad. Mm -hmm. But with social media now, we can see the journalists saying you, what's good, what's bad, and being selective, right. being selective. of what, who they call good and that's bad. That's right. That's right. Right. Yeah. And so we now can, we now know it, we see it, and we can be like, oh, you're wrong. Because you just said this yesterday, mm -hmm. but you're saying this today, mm -hmm. of the same gesture, two women of two different colors. Why? Why? Has that ever happened to you where someone else did something, or you did something, and then someone else did it, and then you got in trouble for it? <clears throat> no, not necessarily in trouble, but I will say there are, if you go on social media and look up science, tech, engineering, math, STEM, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to highlight white people doing it before they highlight a black person doing it. Mm -hmm. They could be doing the exact same thing, mm -hmm. but you're going to get more views and more people backing a white person doing STEM before they do a black person doing STEM. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it's the same old, same old. Same story. Yeah. For those of you just joining, we have Kat Bobino here, STEM um, ambassador. Yes. And we're talking about the Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark situation, LSU, Iowa State. What, <laughs> what is in Iowa? Like, what is Iowa known for? I Potatoes, right? Potatoes. No, that's Idaho. No, Idaho. Sorry. Iowa, I am not sure. I think I know that. Um, was it like sliced bread, corn? <clears throat> I don't know. It, it, it's the it's the north eggs, right? 
I have yeah. no idea. I've uh, never been to Iowa. Yeah, it sounds very wet. Mm -hmm. But it's all good. I think a lot of times, like you said, the media will spin things and will make, will often use race and and in this case, race and gender mm -hmm. against and and the two players ultimately ended up being the victims in all of this. What are your thoughts about Jill Biden inviting both teams oh, to the God. White House, even the losing team? Now, would that never no, been done before? Number one, would that happen in a male dominated? No. Right. No. And have you, we ever seen it in a male dominated? Losers sport? don't get to show up. To no. The, that's like if you lose the playoffs, you do not get a parade. You got a. They're getting a part a participation ribbon. That's what that is. That is See, a partition ribbon BS. and a participate. Can't even yeah. say a participation ribbon no, to say BS. hey, y'all can come. Yeah, I'm not. Science. I'm not here for it. Yes, 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 yes. I'm not here for it either. I'm not here for. It. Okay, so I want to ask you. Back to your best friend being an astronaut, mm -hmm. one of six uh, astronauts in the entire universe and the entire planet who we tried to get on the show today, <clears throat> got a chance to hang out with you. Can I can I say her name? Mm -hmm. uh, Yvonne Cagle. Mm -hmm. Had a chance to meet her. We, we were trying to get together a project and we were at Mills College. We had a meeting. Phenomenal woman, so humble and the invention Mm -hmm. that she shared with me was on some real life Wakanda ish. Mm -hmm. Look, I didn't cuss. So um, <laughs> tell me about your relationship with Yvonne. Tell me about Yvonne. She's so awesome. Well, <clears throat> so Dr. Yvonne Kago is one of six black female astronauts in all of right, the, I, I believe almost 200 astronauts that have been gone through the program. Shh. One of six black women. That's really, she has a medical degree on top of the research that she does. That's right. Amazing woman. I got a chance to meet her about a year ago mm -hmm. at Chabot when mm -hmm. I interviewed her during mm -hmm. Women's History Month. And we became friends. She became a mentor, an ally. And I mean, there's so much I can say about her, but there's so much I can't say about her. But she is yeah. phenomenal woman. She's phenomenal. The stories that I that you shared with me about her is a movie. Mm-hmm. And I cannot believe some of the things that you told me that like you think it's interesting because when you get to these levels where you're one out of four yeah. people, right? you would think that the um, the title or the recognition would kind of be more prestigious and that you would be treated differently. And it's the same old stuff. I couldn't believe some yeah. of the stuff you were telling me yes. that she had to deal with uh, out of uh, one of six black female astronauts in the entire universe. Yes. And there's one and thing. She's brilliant. She's brilliant. And I'm going to say this and she can get mad at me if she wants to. That's fine. But there's one. She's one of bl six black female astronauts. Right. Only three have gone to space. There's three other black female astronauts who did all the training who have never been to space. Why? Well, we can do, we can we know why, right? We know why. It's a male dominated, white male dominated world, even when it goes to government and NASA. Mm. So the average white man who does the training will go to space. The average man who does the training will go to space. Women always get the short end of the stick. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of reasons. There's the reasons they tell her. There's the reasons that they don't tell her. In fact, all three that haven't been to space, there's <clears> multiple <throat> reasons. And I can do conjecture. I can assume, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and they're going to say, oh, you're wrong, right? Because they never right. want to be in the hot seat. But there's multiple reasons why three out of the six have, have why? never been well, to space. Why have the other three gone? Can you share with me what you told me the other day about the party? I'm not going to say that, okay, but, okay, okay, but okay, what okay. I will say is this. Um, you have the first black woman who has been to space, Dr. Mae Jemison, right? You can't bring her into the academy to be an astronaut and never fly her. You just can't, right? Because that looks bad. Mm -hmm. Now, the other two have been who have been to space, there's varying reasons. You can con consider why, multiple reasons, but... Why have you only had six and why have you only flown half? That in and of itself is ridiculous. What is the 
uh, pro, I don't know the protocol, but why is it that like, why isn't the continent of Africa or and its leaders in science or space travel or whatever that department is are not advocating for more black astronauts to get into space? I can only give you my opinion, right? But Africa is a very prominent continent whose resources have been stolen for years, mm -hmm. right? Who have been told you can't for years. Mm -hmm. We run you for years. Even mm -hmm. today, I had someone at my nine to five come in who's from Africa, right? Does he speak the language of his continent? No, he speaks Portuguese. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Portuguese came over mm -hmm. and said, we're going to run you. Portuguese are a trip. Right. Yeah. So the whole country was divided, our whole continent was divided by multiple white and Spanish speaking Spanish countries. And the Dutch. And the Dutch, mm -hmm. right? So in all this time, they've been told what you can't do. But I, I, okay, so I accept that to a certain extent, but it's like we dominate in so many other spaces. Like we need to, I think we need to get our ish together. We need and, to work together. Right. That is the key is we, we've been torn apart. So, this you know, true. you've had. We don't trust each other. Yeah, you have Black Wall Street. You had Black Wall Street working together. And that's not the only uh, point in history of Black people working together. But it's every true. time we work together, something comes, comes to tear it down. And tears no, it down. No, it's true. The evil is organized and it works mm -hmm. hard. And I can see that, like, you're getting together and do every single, single time. Like, they go out of their way. They go yeah. out of their way to yeah, tear I get that. A Black people who working together down. Every time. Yeah. I'm going to read some of the comments. Thomas D. McElroy, who also happens to be my husband, says science. Boxing is a sweet science. Back to me saying my son is a boxer. It is true. He said your son is a scientist and also a mathematician because the type of calculation that it takes for him to throw a punch and to land it on his opponent. It isn't just about the sport. So I'm just going to say that it is, it is definitely a science behind it. And um, I like to give credit to that. So great point, Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> Keep them coming. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, pretty much every sport has science base behind it, right? Mm -hmm. You can, you can love baseball and say you hate statistics, but you know, the statistics of a baseball player. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you know how many hits a boxer can can throw so, how many punches is thrown and how many actual hits are hit, mm -hmm, right? That's mm -hmm, math. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I never say sports is not STEM, but I just wish more people recognized it and wouldn't shy away from science and STEM, but embrace it as something that is together with sports. With sports and pretty much Everything. life. Everything. I was going to say, so for people who don't know, what is a STEM scientist? Like, what do you, what is that? So for me, I have a master's in biology. I've done research on snakes and chicken embryos. And oh my God, that sounds so <laughs> just player. Do you go out on a date and be like, listen, <laughs> I do chicken embryos and, and okay. Gosh. I have done that in my past. <laughs> okay. And um the thing about it is what I try to show people, especially mm -hmm. people in Oakland, mm -hmm. is that science and STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, so STEM, is in everything and everywhere. Mm -hmm. So to say you're not good at it or you you can't do it is a lie. You do it every day. Every day. When you cook, you're doing chemistry. You're turning matter from one form to another by adding a catalyst, which is heat. Boom, you did chemistry. You know what I think is missing? And this just came to me and tell me what you think. I believe or I have a theory that the reason why the sciences in terms of STEM and the, you know, um, engineering and those types of disciplines have not merged to the masses is because you people are very intellectual and brainy <laughs> and the creative part gets suppressed. And so you need those parts in order to reach the masses because people do like creative ideas and 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 i feel like because you're brainiacs and because you're always measuring things and you're very analytical that a lot of the creativity gets suppressed and people can't really i don't know relate to it and if y'all could just like cut loose and get wild for a minute <laughs> get out of your heads and maybe come up with some ideas or maybe turn the the stem or into more of an art that maybe more people would relate to it 
I'm going to agree and disagree. I like that. Okay. I agree when it comes to people and I, and not all of them, not, not all, all of, them. of course we never, but there's those, always exceptions, but yeah. the people who do research to become a Nobel prize winner, right? Oh my God. They are in their heads. Yeah. They, they cannot explain to a kindergartner what they do. Right. Mm -hmm, because it's mm -hmm. so much, but trust and believe when I say, I know plenty of people in STEM, if they hear throwing it back for the nine, nine and 2000, <laughs> they're going to be on the floor dancing. You know what I mean? <laughs> Including myself. Right. Oh, you for sure. Yes. I think you're the bridge. Honestly, <laughs> I think you are the bridge. We just got to get you more encouraged because you came in last week and you were just like discouraged and we want to keep you going because I think you are, you have that it factor plus. So all the people, so, you know, as you know, I host up my own podcast called in the Noah cat Bobino, where I interview diverse people in STEM, right? Majority of them at the end, I ask, well, what do you do outside of science? Right. They be They're, like, I don't know. No, they surf, they cook, they travel, they dance, they, they have, do stuff. They, mm -hmm. they, they, they do it. They are, they're just like anyone else and they have fun. Yeah. It's just media paints them as uh, in a box. Right. Like we said earlier. But they're not in a box. They you can go down, you can go to a club and see somebody jamming. And they might be a neuroscientist. True, true. You know, true, they true, might be true. a doctor. That's true. That's true. Yeah. It's just it's painted that way. And it's also painted that if you're in sports or entertainment, that you're not into it. And that's not true. True. There's that's a lot true, of people true, in sports entertainment true. who have advanced degrees. They it's just not just highlighted being in a box. So you think it's just not highlighted and people aren't covering it. Right. And it's, it's it's the same thing. Like I don't dismiss a lot of people in sports and entertainment because they're very intelligent. Very intelligent. Absolutely. And you, th and there's different types and levels of intelligence. Mm -hmm. Intelligence isn't always just in your brain or you know what i mean yeah. if there's spatial intelligence there's musical intelligence there's intellect you know i don't know nothing about a car don't want to change a tire probably could never have don't want to right, right. but if you can so my ex the father of my child mm -hmm. he changed the brakes in my car mm -hmm. that's an intelligence i don't have mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. great mm -hmm. you know what mm -hmm. i mean on top of the other stuff he can do like mm -hmm. intelligence doesn't mean you're in STEM. That's right. You are intelligent in all the forms There's that you're intelligent. There's many levels of intelligence. Right. Yes. And I just wish, you know, people highlighted it more and don't shy away from it. Yes, yes, yes. You're watching the Venus Lounge. Speaking of intelligence, uh, let's <laughs> toast to some water here. All um, right. You're watching the Venus Lounge, the number one podcast in the galaxy. And you can follow us on YouTube at the Venus Lounge podcast on Instagram at It's the Venus Lounge and then also on KPFA platforms, KPFA 94.1 on Instagram and Facebook and KPFA radio on Twitter, Twitch TV, YouTube and also TikTok. I hope I didn't get that backwards, but I'm sure y'all will be able to find it. Listener supported radio. Go follow them, support. They've been around for over 75 years and I'm happy to be a part of the KPFA family. And so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let me ask you this about your podcast. Mm -hmm. How long have you been on and what's the goal? I've been doing it. Okay. Let me rewind. It started as a TV show in San Francisco mm -hmm. where I was interviewing people in STEM. Um, and then COVID happened, kind of transitioned into a podcast, which was cool because now, you know, I have the opportunity to interview people, not only in the United States, but out of the United States. And the point of it is to showcase that people in STEM, like we said, it's just like anyone else, mm -hmm. as well as what kind of jobs and opportunities are in STEM. Right? What kind of jobs and opportunities are there in STEM, Cat? So many jobs and opportunities, okay. right? I mean, if you can think about it and work hard for it, you can probably do it. I mm -hmm. mean, I've people, interviewed people from astrophysicists to an astronaut, um, shark science conservationist Ooh. person a woman who did pelicans out in pelicans yeah she studied pelicans in new orleans i think like oh, this wow. little island right off the the um right off the uh, shore of louisiana uh -huh, uh -huh. i mean technologists i interviewed a woman who just did she was working on spacesuit the new spacesuits that you might have seen that nasa's about to use um for the next spacewalks and stuff like that um yeah it's just I mean, I've even talked to someone who loves origami and does science in origami. So what does STEM stand for? 
science, technology, engineering, math. For a long time, I thought STEM was like just having to do with like cells and, you know, stem cells. I well, there's stem cells, which is yeah. the cells of embryos that Right. But into... I didn't realize it was an acronym. So mm -hmm. I think y'all need a publicist. <laughs> Please. <laughs> and Please. to like... It's like engineering. It mm -hmm. just is not just mechanics. It's not just science, but it can apply to many different aspects of life. And just like you said, engineering, right? So you got mechanical, you got physical, you got uh, structural. There's so many parts of engineering, mm -hmm. right? The bridges that we can cross every day living in the Bay Area is maintained by an engineer. Wow. Yes. Right. I've gone out with an engineer. Food is engineering. Biodegradable, not biodegradable, but bioengineered food. Bio that's biology food. that's um engineering all of that fits together so there's just a lot of misconceptions that are surrounding it um and a lot of people just are turned off by it because entertainment is very prominent in the united states right? well they're turned off of it because who do you see um in science right you got Bill Nye for a long time, Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, things like that. But I always used to say that, and I still say it, name me one woman on television doing science. Okay, let's talk about that because <laughs> it took hella long for Hidden Figures to come out. And I was, why didn't I know about this? If I had watched that movie when I was a little girl, I probably would have went to school <laughs> <laughs> to become an astrophysicist or something. Right. 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 They, they, and there's so many stories like that. Yeah. Hidden figures. So many stories like that and mm -hmm. hidden figures. And, you know, now everyone's screaming Katherine Johnson. Right. right. And all the math she did, which is great. Please. I am not taking away from what she did because she's an amazing woman. But why wasn't we shouting her name 30 years ago? Why didn't I know about it? Why we didn't know about that? Yeah. Why yeah. we didn't know about the math that she did that sent the first man to space? <sighs> right. Yeah, the human computer. Why did I know about Henrietta Lacks? Exactly. That 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 exactly. was a great movie. Y'all need to watch that. Henrietta exactly. Lacks movie. Exactly. Um. So, what's the goal? My primary goal, right, is to encourage the next generation to go into STEM. There's many many countries, uh, in the in the world, in our world, right, and we have what we call developed and undeveloped countries. I don't know the number of developed versus undeveloped, but I will say the United States falls somewhere between 22 and 25 of developed countries in science and math. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's 24 at least countries doing way better than us in science and in math, right? Okay. And then we want to holler about technology. Most of the technology we use come from out of the country. They just don't tell you that because mm. we're not even good in that. Not because for real. Is tight. It's, so it goes back to the education. It system. goes back to education. And I mean, I do see a DJ. She said, this is so cool. That's yeah. my friend out in LA. Hi, she DJ. is a PhD in STEM education down at USC. Okay. Great person. We need more of you ladies and gentlemen in this field and also getting our children involved. So our, what, if, what if I'm a, I am a parent, but what if my, I see signs of my child having an interest in STEM? What do I do? encourage it if you can encourage sports and entertainment you can encourage them that's true right. and even if your children are in sports and entertainment what could we do to highlight the stem that's in that or what could we do to to expose our children to stem in their everyday aspects of their life that's a good question so i have a book called in the know setting up your child for go. a stem career that was a plug. yes and if you read the book it's a very easy read and one of the things about it is taking what you already do, mm -hmm. right? But encouraging your, your kids to consider STEM if that's what they want to do, right? We vacation. We already do vacations. All the time. Right? Mm -hmm. Let's take them and also show them the biodiversity. Let's have someone come and say, hey, this is what we do. If you're going to go ride elephants in uh, Africa on a safari, why don't you do a study about Africa or elephants before you go? Right. Let's, you know, I ask your kid, yeah, what is a cheetah? I, I like that idea. So instead of doing TikTok videos or <laughs> taking pictures with your kids on an elephant, go find out more about, about an elephant. I think it's too much like, I don't know, with the social media, it's more like it's so based on like, look at the life that we're living. It's leisurely. Aren't we yeah. great? There's a lot of people saying, oh, look at the life we're living. Who's not living a great life. 
Right. And what know? are your kids learning? And what, what are, are your kids doing? Learning? Your, yeah. your kids are learning to smile for the camera. Yes. That's it. And how what is that giving them in the future? Right. How is that preparing them for the future? Mm. So like what if what, where could we find these resources? Like say, OK, I'm taking my young children on a on a trip and we're not bringing any cell phones, you know, or just minimal cell phone time. I want them to learn about agriculture. I want them to learn about the land, the geography, the people. Where, where, where are some of the resources or where could I go to like find out how they can dig a little deeper? Easy. We live in a so in in the www world. Right. Google. Google. You know what I'm saying? Right. Google. Sh- shoot. You can even go on TikTok. I almost cussed. You can go on TikTok <laughs> and just type in the search animals of Africa right. and watch TikToks about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah. can, you know, incur if you still want to do social media, say, hey, I'm going to film you, child. Show me what an elephant does. Right. right, you know what right. I mean? Yeah, you're on your, your phone so much. Tell me how a phone works. Or just take the phones away from them because children are natural explorers. Natural. Mm-hmm. natural. Just take the phones away. You know? When we were kids, you know, you can go outside and Girl. and pick up rocks and all that stuff. Girl, when my kids, my, luckily my children, they, um, and I don't like saying kids because kids are baby goats. My <laughs> grandmother always used to tell me that if you call them kids, you'll make them rebellious. Call them children. They're children. When my children were little, uh, we didn't have cell phones. My children didn't get cell phones until my daughters, until they were in high school. My son, really, he just got one like last year and he's 16. Um but they used, I used to send them outside. I'd be like, here's a stick, some tape, and, a, and some scissors. Go make it happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they would be out there for hours um, playing with snails, lifting up rocks. One time, my daughters and my sons dissected a mouse in the driveway. And, they, and my daughter was like, I never realized that a mouse has two encasings around its heart. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is disgusting. But I was so happy that they explore. And I just feel like this is just we're not doing our kids right this is like taking free imagination playtime away from them from them by replacing them with the phones is the worst thing that you could do to a child it's neglect i it agree is. and then now we have ai right and ai can write papers oh my god ai can write y'all about to be dumb <laughs> you so dumb you so yeah, and dumb, that's the thing girl. right because i was i was having this conversation with somebody the other day is they can write research yeah. papers the whole point of re of doing a research is paper research. is to research and show what you know if ai is writing it for you what do you know right Outside of what to tell an AI what to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We take away from our kids' imagination. I mean, even adults don't have an imagination. Because quite honestly, look at most of the movies coming out. Mm -hmm. They're remaking old movies because they can't think of new movies to do. There's no imagination. The world is becoming smaller because there's too much information out there. Like the curtain has been pulled back. Yeah. And so we're just seeing too much, exposed to too much. There's not, originality is definitely suffering. Yeah. For them, yes. And and let me even rewind, like what we can do with our kids, even with a phone. Right. There's a thing called citizen science mm-hmm. where you can go and look up and be a citizen science with your kids. And they'll say, hey, you can send a picture of a plant, an animal, something like that. And right. they'll tell you what it is. Mm-hmm. And you can. And it helps scientists realize the biodiversity in your city, your home, even in your backyard. So you can be a citizen scientist. And take pictures with your phone and send it in and that they'll tell you so what it dope. is. Yeah. So if you're going to be, if you're going to use your phone, use it in such a way where you're educating and you're still being curious and you're still learning things. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the world is your oyster. The world is even bigger for kids, children, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and if you let them explore mm-hmm. and be a child, like, for example, my son is two. Mm-hmm. I have him helping me cook. Right. I see help that all bake. the time. Y'all make cookies. And yeah. Yeah. More so baking than cooking because I don't want him, you know, I have to get him some kid knives or whatever, but he bakes. And then I also let him finger paint and not just finger paint, pretty much body paint. I have hardwood floors. I tape the paper oh, down. I put it. paint on the paper and he's in his hands, knees, feet, just, all this stuff, all right? In it. Yeah. All in it. And I posted a video of it and somebody was like, well, well, I'm going to do that and I want to see what my mom says. And it's like, okay, <laughs> why are you comparing yourself to a two-year-old? <laughs> First of all, and second of all, he's learning about colors. He's learning about his hands, his feet, and his hardware. And it's 
and it's water-based paint. It right, easily so it comes wash up. off. Yeah. I can throw him in the tub and he's fine. But you're comparing yourself to a two-year-old. Why? Right. And so what? Maybe you need to go paint and finger paint, girl. Go ahead. It's so much fun and just being creative and just can you, just wallowing around and paint right. and dirt and mud and water or whatever it is. Just being a child. And, and I've had, and you know, the criticism. Oh, he dropped flour everywhere. You know, he's making so a mess. So good. what? He's That's two. science too. He's learning about gravity. Leave yeah. him alone. <laughs> he's two. He's okay. Yeah. He's he gets to have fun. Right. Yes. As well as learn. Yes. 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 You know. And then when he's making cookies, bomb cookies in about ten years, don't ask for none. You so worried about? <laughs> don't ask for my cookies. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting because <clears throat> I've seen parents who, and we don't know what we're doing, but we're always about like, don't mess this up. Keep needing. Oh, it looks like our signal went off for a second. I let the water run and they would just be in there pouring water for hours. Water work, just mm -hmm. doing water, you know, mm -hmm. pouring glass into another glass, into another glass. Mm -hmm. And I think parents don't want their children to do that because of the cleanup. Yeah, that, that, the mess. Yeah, the mess that's mm -hmm. involved. But just the wonders that it does for the child's mind and the amount of freedom and a, a relaxation that it gives them. They played more with just little things around than toys that I actually bought them. I just stopped buying them toys. Yeah. Children are natural explorers and scientists. Mm -hmm. If you let them be, they have an imagination. You ask a kindergartner. So this is what I met, did my master's on is, you know, children in science and kind of like where we, we dead in it. Right. Mm -hmm. You ask a kindergartner what you want to be. They might say, I want to explore dinosaurs on the moon. Wow. Right. There's an adult whether it's a teacher or a parent, saying you can't do that. Oh. Dinosaurs aren't on the moon. You can't be there. You, know what I'm saying? Right. Right? And you, you don't know you, that. You kill yeah. it. You kill the right. dream kill for a kindergartner dream. who's saying, I'm going to study dinosaurs on the moon. So what should a parent say if they're, if your child comes to you with something that's not rational to you and join in the, in the imagination, really? And what kind of dinosaurs do you think right. you would find on the moon? So here, here's my thing. This is what I hope to practice because I only have a two-year-old. So he, still, he got time. But instead of saying you can't do that, Ask them, how are you going to do it? Got you. You know, how can you do this? How are you going to, what do you need to do to study dinosaurs on the moon? Right? Let them explore being an astronaut, an astronomer, you know, um, or paleontologist, which they'll eventually get to. But instead of saying, no, you can't say, okay, how are you going to do this? What do you need to do to prepare to do this? Right? right. And let them answer it. So what does that get their mind? It gives them the imagination to say, I can do this. Now let me explore how to do right. it. Right. As they get older, instead of saying you can't do it, now they've lost interest. You shut them down. You shut them down. Yeah. Now you say, hey, how can you show me? Right. Because anything is possible anything if you can think possible. about it. Let's read some comments. It's Talia here. She says, hey, hey, Talia Taylor. Hey. I was just thinking about science and cooking. It's been good for Cam and I. Um, cooking and science. So I, I have a lot of single moms <clears throat> and not just single moms, moms in general who and dads who want to, you know, because cooking is a pretty much a part of our life. Mm -hmm. And a lot of children do want to help. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we are trying to get dinner done by a certain amount of time. And sometimes the time that it takes to stop to get them to help is the time that you may lose to do other stuff. And mm -hmm. so it can create some anxiety for us. What are some of your suggestions for your children who want to help cook and learn things while we're cooking and trying to get you know, meet our daily deadlines with our responsibility, keeping things together in the house. Right. I'm not going to say it's easy. Right. Um, so, but there are uh, children based like cutting utensils, cutting board, stuff like that. That's not as sharp as a knife, but they can actually cut through fruits and vegetables or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To me, too, too young to be dealing with raw meat. Right. Yeah. But okay. he can deal with vegetables and other stuff like that. Right. And how many times have we cooked and the dinner was not that great? Like we th tried a new recipe. Oh, it was girl, like, dinner's be fire. I okay, your dinner to be fire. I'll try <laughs> one of them Hello Freshes or something like oh, that. Yeah, and I try it and I'll be like, ooh, right. And I spent like over an hour to cook this and it was not great. So why can't I let my son do it? Right. You know what I'm saying? If it's not it's great, true. I'll have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's fine. 
but also like the Montessori schooling technique. Oh God, love Montessori. Yeah, let them make, let him make his own food. Here's some fruit, here's some bread, here's some whatever. Mm -hmm. Let them try. And mm -hmm. if it's nasty, it's nasty. Try something else. But, you know. Yeah. If it's nasty, it's nasty. Let them try something else right. and just keep keep it moving. Keep going. Yeah, keep going. You know, the, the top chefs in the, the top chefs in the world have messed up a meal or two. What for the last of is what? <laughs> 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 Sorry about be that. Ourselves. Be ourselves. Be ourselves. All right. I can't hold it up again. I can't. I can't see it. All right. So this is Cap Bobino, STEM ambassador, friend, sister, homie that's joining me today. We're just kind of chopping it up, talking about family, talking about science, talking about you know everything. Being that, a mom. Being a mom. You know. Let's like talk about that. Oh my goodness. I luckily became a mom during a pandemic, right? Where most women have to return back to work in six <laughs> weeks, which is a terrible what, system. What were you doing during the pandemic, nasty? Actually, <laughs> actually. <laughs> she said luckily. Actually. What you mean, right? Luckily. <laughs> actually, it was Valentine's Day. Okay, okay. It was a Valentine's celebration that went too far, apparently. And in February of 2022, or 2020, and in March, I'll never forget, Friday, March 13th, my job sent me home early because uh -huh. they was like, we got to clean up COVID maybe. <laughs> On the 14th, found out I was pregnant. On the 15th, the world shut down and I didn't go back to work in the building for two years. Okay, so let me just ask you this. How you found out you was pregnant? You didn't know when you was doing it that it was a possibility? Well, I knew it was a possibility. Because right? it'd be like that moment, you'd yeah. be just like, oh, and then you know what? in the moment, and then all, the, don't you just like know when it happens, though? Like every single time I got pregnant in that moment that it happened, I was like, damn. I did not know, okay, because we did a gondola ride on Lake Merritt. I thought you were gonna say something else. No, Go no, ahead. we did a gondola on, on Lake Mary. We had adult beverages, right, and food. We had a lot of fun that evening, and so no, I did not think about that in the moment, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> one month later, when I should have got my menstrual, I did not, and that's how I found out what was what. <laughs> <laughs> and was it the happiest day of your life or are you were you like oh ish half and half right because okay. quite honestly that weekend i was supposed to go with a friend of mine who was studying goats out in the sierra mountains mm -hmm. i was supposed to go up there and we were supposed to be studying goats together but i saw it was going to be snowing i said i'm not driving in the snow and then i found out i was pregnant and then the world shut down that was cool though, because you could just be at home and be pregnant and not have to like get up and go to work. And like, I mean, you were working from home. Well, I was still... working from home, but at the same time, my biggest thing is I didn't have to go back to work in six weeks. I had to, I get to I had I had the opportunity to keep my son home for almost a year. I remember we talked about this too, and you were like, I don't even like kids. I don't to this day. Don't like kids. How's that work? I love mine. <laughs> I love my child. And I did meet a kid today that was so well behaved that I liked him too. So you don't on like a, bratty kids. I on loud. I don't like them loud in my face. You know what I mean? I don't like kids. Yeah. Which is why I don't do programs with kids. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to go to a school and say, let's do something together. Cause the moment you're like, I don't want to do it, well, go away. <laughs> I don't want to do it either with brat. you. you know yeah. I mean? So I don't really like kids. Yes. But they're the future. So I encourage them. Yes, 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 yes. And so tell me about your relationship with your with your son's father. Dad. Yeah. And how. we've had some rocky moments, but it's way better now. We co-parent very well. Good, um, good, he's I'm in glad. his own space. I'm in my own space. We share, we make sure we're on the same page when it comes to our kid. Right. So we uh we we're on a very better a much, much better plane than we used to be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I remember, um, did you, did you have postpartum? If you ask me, no. If you ask him, yes. I right. So, yeah. So, um, for me, it was, I'm a first time mom. So I didn't How even did know. know? Yeah. yeah. I don't know what my feelings are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Right. Were there moments when my son was crying and I was like, Oh, this is too much. I can't do it. Oh, hell yes. Much, yes. Yeah. 
But then I'm also like, maybe every parent goes through this. I don't yeah, have postpartum, girl, right? Yes. But if you ask his dad, yeah, yeah. I had postpartum. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just didn't know it in the midst of it. Because nobody really talks about it. They Everyone don't. just wants to romanticize having babies and pregnancy and breastfeeding. And it's not romantic at all. It's... When you go back, so I'm going to just say it like this. The media will tell you what you... I had a problem with my son. He still doesn't sleep through the night. Right. Yeah, and then when my sleep. my ex and I separated, I was having a real hard time just being by myself with my son at night. Like during the day, great. Night, terrible. So I had to talk to a therapist. Right. And the therapist was like, what what makes you think you got to be the best mom in the world? Right. Hello. And why do you feel like he should always be with you? Let him go with his dad. Girl. Get some sleep. Do you Get think some it's, rest. Do you think it's control. A part of his control, but a part of his society telling us that moms have to do it. Right. We have to we have that to, just doing and being a mom. We and have being to be a parent at all costs. And your yeah, children we ha- come we're first. the ones have to give up everything. We're the ones have to be the one at home all the time. He's sick. Mom should be there. Why can't mom be there? Mm-hmm. Why is that? Why isn't it that dads don't have that same pressure? I, I'll go on a trip for a week. You can stay with your dad. Society will tell me that's wrong. It's not. I know they. Will. It's not. It Women, we, moms, we need our own lives. I mean, shoot, it's enough that I'm carrying it for nine months. Heck yeah, my back is hurting. Everything I can't sleep on my stomach at night. Like you give up so much, and then I got to give you my boob too. Right, and they the go baby on here. They deflate. They, they the deflate. One. You know what yeah. I mean? No, yeah, 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 you can go yeah. with your daddy. Bump that. You know, and at first when we first separated, I didn't want him over there. Now. I'd be like, when you at home, boom, <laughs> done. Here, here so you go. So why didn't you want him over there? Because this, I think this is a thing that happens with mom. It's like, it's like you don't, you don't want anybody watching your children better than what you do. But at yeah. the same time, the minute they're gone, you call and hey, does he have this? Did you get him that? Mm-hmm. I do it to this day. We'll call. I Craziness. do it all the time, but I also have re- let go. Cause that's his dad. His dad loves him. His you dad's gonna I mean? do right by him. Happen to him. Nothing's gonna happen to him. So now I get to go home. And sleep without Ooh, some feet girl, in my back. Some good sleep. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, I remember you left here the other night. We was like, "Where are you going?" Caddy was like, "Go home and get in the bed with no one's feet in my neck." <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I love it. Celebrate he it. Sleep in his own bed. No. Why? His daddy. I blame him. Okay. Right. When I was still pregnant, his dad was like, "He can't sleep in a bed with us. He we can't co sleep." I said, "Cool." Within a month or two, he put him in the bed with us, and I was like, "What are you doing?" You said no co sleeping. He was like, "It's easier." He ain't left since. Kid ain't left the bed oh, yet. That'll shut it down real quick. Putting the baby in between you and you trying to sleep. That was not my fault. Okay. Not your fault. It ain't my fault. Not you my need to fault. Play that by uh, Master Pete. <laughs> that was not me. I did not do that. It's the Venus Lounge. You're watching the number one podcast in the galaxy. We are talking with Cap Bobino, STEM ambassador, mother of one. You mm-hmm. think you'll have another one? At this age, I don't know. If I ha- if I am, it has to happen soon. I'm not asking for help. I'm just saying it would have to happen sooner than later. Is it hard for you to ask for help? Yes. Why? Because I've always done it independently. And it's hard to, especially when you've been burned by people. Mm-hmm. You can ask for help and people are like, sure, I'll help you. And then they don't step up. Mm-hmm. And that's happened that more often. Is that always the case? Or have you actually met people who came through on the help that they said they would offer you? I'll put it to you this way. I've been doing STEM outreach for over a decade. And I can probably count on one hand how many people show up to any program I do by the book that I've written, you know, out of the people I know. Close. I'm just I'm just saying in general. Yeah. No, I don't know, not just in STEM, like, you know, just like, hey, you know, I'm having a hard time right now, whatever it is, fill in the blank. Do you think you can fill in the blank and help me out for a second? I can maybe count on two hands. Okay. <laughs> but they do fine. show up. There's whatever, people that show up. Whoever the two people are, yeah, there's people I'm, that show I'm up. asking if it's hard for you to ask for help and why. Because it's hard for me. Now, so, and I'm, I'm asking you because I want to know. I think for me, it's um, I feel like I don't want to burden anyone. Oh, I don't have a problem burdening you. Right. <laughs> I will ask you. But I've had so many people who say, yeah, I'll do it. And then turn around and don't that I don't want to ask anymore, but I will burden you. 
help me. <laughs> As Kevin Hart say, help me. <laughs> I will ask. I will ask. Well, if you ask, I don't mind. Okay. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're my sister. I want to see you succeed. Thank we you. want to see you do well here. That's what we do at the Venus Lounge. We want to be your cheerleaders. But don't just be calling me for anything, you know, because I got my own problems. <clears throat> anyway, I appreciate y'all tuning in. And let's 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 do some announcements. Let's do some announcements. You got any announcements? What you got coming up? I do. Mm -hmm. So my son's name is Carter. Mm -hmm. I had wrote a, uh, I'm right in the process of producing four books called Carter Candy. Okay. The first one should be coming out within a month is called Carter can be an astrophysicist. Okay. Then there's going to be Carter can be a geologist, a biologist. And I think a marine biologist is the All ones right. that I've written. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I want to encourage our kids to go into STEM and this is part of my way of doing that. So please support me by buying the book. Buying the book and go to catbomino.com for all the information. Mm -hmm. We will see you guys next week. Thank you for tuning in. Support your local STEM scientists. Get your children into STEM. Get Please. them into the sciences. Basketball and entertainment and all that is great, but there's so many other things that they can be interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, follow us on Instagram at It's the Venus Lounge and on YouTube at the Venus Lounge Podcast. And we will see you next week. Thank you. Can I play some music on the way out? Please. What you want to hear? And I'll just say this, just because they're in the sports entertainment doesn't mean they can't do STEM. You can do more you than can, one thing. Can do both, right? You can do more than one thing. Absolutely, uh -huh. they can. And Absolutely. finance. And Teach finance. them about money. But first, you gotta listen to some ghetto trap music if you really want to have the foot in the game you really want to be successful. Look, let's do this. Put it up. What's her name? Who said that you can't? No. That nigga munching, he gon' eat me like a mango. Long feet, it be tickling my ass. Yeah. Yeah. Wonder what I do tomorrow that these who be mad at. Uh. Oh yeah, sweet, and I always get my leg broke. I thought for my, right then I'm fighting over that. Can't say your name up in my songs. Might not put you to my.